For that price, I want real Jasmine, Chanel, okay? Are you listening? My iPad is now wearing 1957 as well. Do you love it? Does it suit your skin? Ooh, kambong. Hi guys, it's Archwell Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Ooh, it's hot in London right now, so hot, redness, everything. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? <sighs> Some Chanel samples recently came into my possession and I thought I would do a real cool, easygoing video uh, and just smell them. There were some that I had smelled before, but there was seven that I'd never tried. So I thought I'd just smell them, do first impressions, give you information about them. But first and foremostly, smell them. Because that's what we do here on Outro Mano's channel. We smell things and we talk about them. So I know Chanel is a very popular brand. I know it's a very well-loved brand. I am not by any means a Chanel aficionado. I'm not one of those fans that knows the deep history of the brand or the deep history of Coco Chanel or Gabrielle Chanel. But I do know that I like their perfumes and I actually have some. I have some, they're up there, they're out of shot, you can't see them. But I have Coromandel, Allure Sensuel, um, Kier de Rossi, I have Bois d'Azile and I have Ch Ch Chance Au Vive. So I'm just gonna smell them and let's get to it. Okay, hope you've all been well by the way. So I'm just gonna grab them randomly. So there, the first one is part of their, this line. I want to say Les Or, but I don't think you pronounce the S in French. I think it would be Les Or de Chanel, and it's just called Paris. I remember when these were launched, I think there's three of them. Uh, and they're named after maybe different places in Paris, I'm not sure. Again, I said I'm not a, par a, a Paris aficionado, a Chanel aficion aficionado. Is that even the word? Oh, pretty. Mmm. Oh, it definitely smells pink. Uh, it definitely smells like a springtime pink, musky, fruity, floral. What is the flower though, you may ask? I have no idea. It doesn't really feel like a Chanel perfume. So this one's just called Paris, by the way. It's this one, I'll show you the whole thing. There you go. So it's just called Paris. So if you can hear noise, I apologise. It's very, very busy around here. There are ups and downs to moving to a new place. Last place was quieter. This one's more noisy. But I really like this. It's got a little bit of fizziness going on. It's really casual smelling, but very elegant at the same time. It feels a little bit rosy. I don't think it's white flowers. Pink is the perfect colour for this. It does feel a little bit like something that maybe Longcom would release and not really Chanel. However, from what I know, this is a separate line to their main line, their exclusives line. So maybe that's the vibe. Maybe it's a bit more of a stripped back, simple thing. There is no denying that this is very pretty though. It reminds me of in the realm of like Miracle, you know, by Lancome or one of the pink ghost perfumes. I think it's called Cherish. It's that kind of pinkness. So anyway, that's my impression. What I'm gonna do now is look it up so I can actually see what this thing is about and if I was right. It's like a little mini test to myself. Okay, bear with me. You know, just while I'm looking this up, th doing stuff like this, this is for me some of the funnest parts of loving perfumery because it's smelling something for the first time and not knowing anything about it is, it's like opening the first page of a book for me, you know, it's like what adventure awaits. And for me, it's, it's exciting because you never know if you're gonna find your next big thing, your next new love, your n next new obsession, you know? So that's why I do things like this. And also it's just fun to talk about perfume. Okay, Leor. Leor by Chanel is a journey. Everything's a journey in perfumery, even the journey of perfumery itself. Oh, there's way more than, there's way more than three. So this is a sparkling, Oh, I said it was a bit fizzy. A sparkling floral woody fragrance faceted with rose pat on my back. Uh, citrus patchouli and a hint of spicy pink pepper. A carefree scent that captures the relaxed elegance of the legendary French capital. It's really nice. I mean, that's the picture of it on the website. It's really pretty that, and that's a very good description. They've got that one right on the head. 
it's, it's a little bit of a sparkly, rosy floral. So yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next one because there's seven to smell. Here we go. So the next one is part of that same line and this one's called Biarritz. <laughs> That's what she's called, Biarritz. Is this another part of Paris? I'm not sure. I will look it up after for now. Let's smell it and see. Oh, this one I don't like as much. This is much more citrusy than the other one. This feels like lemon sorbet to me. And when I try fragrances that are mainly focused on citruses, I kind of lose interest because for me, a lemon's a lemon's a lemon. There's only so much you can do with it, right? Um, I like things a little bit more exotic. So citruses, while they're very pleasant and wake up your senses and make you feel summery and lovely, for me, they all kind of smell the same. And this one smells like bergamot. And that's pretty much all I can smell. I don't know how much these things cost. Maybe I should tell you that as well. I don't know, we'll see. For me, it just smells like bergamot, so I'm gonna move on. But I will look up what it is, just for, you know, the fun of it. So, Biarritz, uh, 1915, Gabrielle Chanel is taken with the sporty yet fashionable atmosphere of Biarritz, where she opens her first couture house near the casino. Okay, that's why, that's the inspiration. It's a place where she opened her first shop. This one is vibrant and delicately fruitly, Sicilian, fruity, fruitly, Sicilian mandarin highlights the sparkling radiance of a lily of the valley accord in this dynamic fragrance that is refreshing as a splash of sea spray. Maybe Biarritz is a seaside town. Um, I wouldn't say it's mandarin at all, it definitely feels more lemony. And lily of the valley? It's tucked in there somewhere, but really it's about citrus. I'm not trying these on my skin, by the way. This is just first impressions and chit chat. I'm sure the Lily of the Valley will make itself known at some point. Anyway, next. The next one is called Sycamore. And I know that this is one of the Lay Exclusives ones, but I have never tried it. I'm guessing that it is gonna smell woody because Sycamore, it's a tree. Hopefully it's a woody fragrance. Who knows what's gonna happen? Let's try it and see. Ooh, vetiver. Lots and lots of vetiver in this one. If you don't know what vetiver smells like, I will explain it. Vetiver is a grass, essentially, and it grows in places like Haiti and Java, and I think Indonesia. Um, and perfumers distill the root of the plant. It gives a fragrance a big jolt of woodiness, earthy, almost sometimes nuttiness. And it's quite a dense note, and it smells like just like that, like a grassy, earthy root that is, it's a really fantastic smelling material and that's what's immediately jumping out at me here. I wonder if it's got actual sycamore bark in it? I don't know. I can also smell pepper here. So this, for me, it smells like a peppery vetiver. It's actually really simple to my nose. I have there's so many of the exclusives I haven't tried, so I'm kind of excited. The only one I have is uh, Coromandel, so. <sighs> Actually, Kier de Rossi and Bois de Zille, but I've got them in the older, shall I just show you them quickly? Shall we just sidetrack for a sec? So my Kier de Rossi looks like this. I don't know if that's the older one or not. So yeah, that's my Kier de Rossi and this is my Bois de Zille. So they are, I think, I think possibly vintage ones. Uh, they were a gift from my fairy godmother, so I prize them so much. And Bois de Zille is unreal. Oh gosh, it's such a beautiful perfume. Anyway, yeah, those are two of my Chanel's that I have in, with the big, big sprayers. Anyway, back to Sycamore. I kind of like this, but it's just, it's not too complex. And I, I kind of like complex things. I know not everything needs to be, but that's just my style. Smells dry and woody. There's definitely more than vetiver going on a bit. It, for me, it just feels like pepper. I'm probably missing things. Let's read about sycamore. Named after a giant tree, named for a giant tree, sycamore evokes the earthy nature of autumn. Composed around vetiver, it leaves behind a reassuring, slightly spicy, fragrant touch. I said pepper, didn't I? Maybe it's not pepper, but it is spicy vetiver. Sycamore is composed around the smoky scent of vetiver. It's notes of cedar and vanilla leave behind a reassuring slightly spicy fragrant touch 
it's just the same kind of words but just jumbled around a little bit. The fragrance in the Sycamore was created by Gabrielle Chanel in 1930. I thought it was way newer than that. Wow, I'm not up with my Chanel game here. Named for a giant tree, Sycamore evokes the earthy nature of autumn. It recounts the heat radiating from the earth like an echo to Mademoiselle's childhood among the centuries old volcanoes in Auvergne. Um, not ra ranting and raving about this one really. It's another quite simple one. All three of them have been quite simple. Spicy vetiver, let's move on. The next one is called 31 Rue Cambon. It's obviously a very significant street in Paris and I'm sure I'll find out why in a minute. But yeah, I haven't tried these. They are completely full samples and I'm just excited because I do genuinely like Chanel as a brand. I don't like the prices of things, but... Okay, let's see. Oh, Ooh, this is way better. This is more like it. Oh, this is nice. This feels more, much more like a Chanel perfume. This feels a little bit like Kier de Rossi. It's got, you know, when sometimes when a Chanel perfume has that distinct Chanel-esque DNA that you can't, you just can't replicate. It's, it's, it's something that's hard to describe. I don't know, it's just that Chanel magic. I talk about it all the time on my channel. This one is Oh, what am I smelling here? It's, it feels fruity, but also musky as well and woody at the same time. There's one particular thing in here that I'm really familiar with and I can't pinpoint what it is. It's, is it Osmanthus maybe? It's almost kind of apricot-y in a way. What's the wood as well? I've smelled this before. I haven't smelled this perfume before, but I've smelled something that is so close to this. Maybe it was a dupe of something. I know what it is that this smells like. This smells like Pride by Der Duft, a perfume that I have. So it's a sheepra, it's a, it's a fruity sheepra, this one. Ah, it really smells like Pride by Der Duft. That doesn't help you, person who's watching, I know, but let me look up what's in here. It's a, yeah, fruity sheepra. It's on the softer side, it's not aggressive. There's not any super aggressive moss or anything like that. Ah, oh, it's nice. Interesting. I'm going to spray it side by side with Pride and see if I can decide which one I like best. <laughs> okay, here it is. Pride by De Duft. I wore this recently because it was Pride. I wore Pride on Pride. And this is really giving me the same vibe. I just want to... Pride has got a little bit more going on, but the same. it's got the same core. They're so similar. This is like... Pride is like a slightly darker version of, of uh, Rue 31 Cambon, whatever it's called. Yeah, and the Chanel one's like a, a slightly softer, kind of more finessed one. Surprising thing to happen, I didn't know. Anyway, let's read about this perfume. They're really close, wow. Okay, uh, Rue Cambon. Oh, I really wanna try the Gardenia one. There's a Gardenia one. Wow, their prices went up. This perfume is, 300 pounds. How much is the 75 mil one? The 75 mil ones are 169 pounds and the 200 mil ones are 300 pounds. When I got my Coromandel, it was, I think it was 230, so they've really hiked their price up. Anyway, 31 Rue Cambon, Gabrielle Chanel's place of refuge in the heart of Paris, a symbol of the Chanel style and its timeless elegance. Illustrated by the simplicity and strength of a beautiful Sheepra Accord. I told you it was a Sheepra, I told you. An essence of beauty. Um, it expresses the timeless elegance of the Chanel style through the strong and simple accents of a beautiful Sheepra Accord heightened with iris, black pepper and vetiver. I want to know what the, the, um, the, the fruit is. Like, it's definitely fruity. In 1918, Gabrielle Chanel set up her couture house at 31 Rue Cambon, uniting the haute couture ateliers, Gabrielle Chanel's apartment and the creation studio, all in one location. The building, which became her place of refuge in the heart of Paris, boasts a majestic staircase lined with mirrors, affording a 
view of the happenings below. That's where she liked to sit and perched atop the stairs she could observe her shows unseen. An iconic address that remains a symbol of the Chanel style and its timeless elegance. It would make sense that it's a Chypre then. Okay, they're veering off, but the opening's the same. So yeah, they say iris, black pepper, and a Chypre accord. Nice, nicely done, elegant, but it smells very fruity to me. Let's move on. Okay, the next one is called 1932. There you go. Obviously a significant date for the company. It was founded, or maybe it's her birthday. Chanel fans are gonna be sitting there just cursing me out. I'm just sniffing stuff, guys. It's just perfume. Not so fun. Citrusy again, for now. Let me spray this one on. I'm gonna spray at least one of them on me, okay? I'm gonna spray 1932 on my hand. I immediately am getting citruses. And a little bit of that Rue Cambon one again. Why is that? It's like the Rue Cambon one, but it's without that fruitiness. This musky as well. This one's, this one's actually really nice, but... And it definitely has that Chanel thing. It has the Chanel magic, it has the Chanel base or that Chanel accord that makes their, their, their fragrances have that signature. This one's like a citrusy Chypre. Chypres are kind of citrusy sometimes, but not overly so. It also feels like it could have a gentle leather in it as well. A very soft one, almost like a suede feeling. It feels like a little bit of Kia de Rossi in amongst something with more citruses and a little bit of that Rue Cambon one. <laughs> It's like an amalgamation of multiple Chanelified things. Definitely can feel something leathery. The same type of leather that's in Kia de Rossi, but softened, softened, softened. Let me look it up. It's getting nicer as it's drying. It's got this sort of powderiness going on as well. So 1932, uh, Gabrielle Chanel created her first high jewellery collection. That's what the year signifies. She called it Bijou de Diamant, which is Kiss, kiss of diamonds, maybe? A brilliance reflected by precious and sensual fragrance centered around powdery <laughs> and woody notes. The fragrance presents a sensual precious accord of jasmine. I wonder why it hasn't got real jasmine in it. For that price, I want real jasmine, Chanel, okay? Are you listening? Faceted by powdery notes of iris and vetiver. This is why it's, I'm tying it to that Rue Cambon one because that also had iris and vetiver in it, so. It's okay, it, it's, it feels perfumey and it feels pleasant. The iris is what was making me think of leatheriness because iris can give a leathery feel to a perfume. It can actually give a suede feel to a perfume. I should really, really trust my nose, guys. I really should. Yeah, it's like a toned down version of the, the 30, 31 Rue de Cambon one. Anyway, two left. The next one is called 1957. There you go. There you go. Okay, let me spray this one and see what's, what's going on with this one. Okay. My iPad is now wearing 1957 as well. Do you love it? Does it suit your skin? Hmm. This one also feels a bit leathery. And it is a bit of citrus and something, uh, I, what I feel is kind of lemony again. Uh, sorry, leathery again. And it feels like it could be another Sheepra, but a, a really mild one again. It feels like, is this gonna sound really bad? Don't judge me, but it feels like a lot of these perfumes are just bits of each other tipped into each other. It's like they went, oh, oh, just name that one, that. Let's just call it that, and because it's legacy. I don't know. The more I'm smelling, the more kind of frustrated I'm getting with them. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's true. There's, there's not enough diversity in the ones that I'm talking about the ones I'm smelling now these uh, these exclusive ones yes the sycamore one was vetiver and that stood out but then there's been vetiver in the other two of the others as well as a kind of leathery iris in then the next three I don't know it's just a bit I don't know I want to read what this one is it it smells pleasant but I'm not crazy about it I know you're probably gonna sit there and say well you haven't smelled this one yet and you haven't smelled tried that one and that one's different but maybe I've just got a bunch that all smell the same. I don't know. I have tried um, Misia or Misia, and that one's actually really good. That's the violet one. I can't find this one on their website. Here it is. One second. 
1957, the United States, 1957, Coco Chanel was world renowned and rewarded for her bold creations, drawing upon rare ingredients to re reinvent and exalt them. 1957 is a fragrance in this image, a finely crafted white musk accord, a luminous signature of the Chanel style. It is bergamot. It is iris again. Neroli, cedar, honeyed and powdery notes. I said I could smell a citrus. I said I could, said I could feel like a leather again from like Kudarissi and the other ones. I don't really smell neroli, but there is an element of powderiness. And this is this one doesn't feel Chanel-y either. This one feels, even though it smells like the others, it doesn't have that the, the strong DNA. I wouldn't uh, white musk. I would never have said white musk ever. And I've smelled lots of different white musk perfumes. I'm not when I think of white musk, I don't think of the body shop white musk. I think of different, like a transparent, luminous white musks as well. This one's not so good either. I don't I don't really like this one. I think the Rue Cambon one has been the best so far. So let's smell the last one. The last one is Jersey. And it doesn't say it. Oh, it only says it at the back. There you go. It only says it at the back. It doesn't say it on the front like some of the others. That's strange. What are you going to be? Oh, it's not. Okay, this one actually is different. Oh, this is really nice. It makes me think of the south of France. This is lavender. I can smell lavender straight away. It smells like it's got other purple flowers in it. Softer ones somewhere over there. This is a really elegantly done lavender perfume. Lavender can be really harsh sometimes. It can be camphorous. This feels like freshly picked, like you've rubbed lavender on your fingers and there's something softer behind. It may be a violety type feeling or... Oh, so elegant. This is really, really nice. This is, I think, my favorite one. And it, even though it's quite simple as well, I want to put this one on too. Yeah. Mmm. As far as lavender perfumes go, I think this is my favourite one I've ever smelled and I don't really know why. It's because it's, it's not overly done. The lavender isn't harsh, even though it's the main thing. Lavender can sometimes go really wonky on me personally as well. I mean, is it £300 though? I don't think so. The Roaring Twenties, Mademoiselle Chanel took Jersey, the beautifully raw, supple fabric used to make sailor sweaters and dressed women in flowing garments that could be worn with natural effortless elegance. Jersey evokes the joy of this flight of freedom in a soft and creamy fragrance. Jersey combines the softness of lavender with that of bourbon vanilla in a creamy accord heightened with notes of white musk. I wonder what the creaminess is, but why, why lavender? What's, what's the, the whole significance of the sailor sweaters and Jersey? What's that got to do with lavender? I don't know. Jersey evokes the joy of this flight of freedom in a soft and creamy fragrance. I wouldn't call it soft and creamy. I would say it's a sparky lavender with certain softer notes behind. Maybe when it dries a bit, it might go creamy because lavender can go super soft, can't it? It can go very powdery and gentle and mild. I think I can feel white musk here a little bit more than I could in the other one that said it had white musk. And that's what the softness is. But again, quite simple, elegant and simple. I'm gonna give that one a full wearing and see how I feel about it because I don't often wear very lavendery fragrances. I certainly wouldn't pay 300 pounds for it though, gosh. Not any of those actually. Coromandel is the one for me and it's my only one, it's my baby. Aren't you my precious little baby? Mm. I love it so much. This is, this, is, this is the one, nothing beats this one. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the video there. I uh, hope you guys liked it. It was just a casual chit chat, relaxing afternoon. Just talking about some Chanel stuff, really. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I'm Alex Romano, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.